investing in a green future. Financial actors are here to scale up action and deploy resources in fundamentally new and meaningful ways. And coalitions are here with partnerships and initiatives to move us closer to a resilient, carbon-neutral world by 2050. I'm very grateful to the leaders and members of the nine wide-ranging coalitions that worked with great creativity and passion so that we can all get the most out of this summit. And young people, above all, young people are here providing solutions, insisting on accountability and demanding urgent action. They are right. My generation has failed in its responsibility to protect our planet. That must change. The climate emergency is a race we are losing, but it is a race we can win. The climate crisis is caused by us, and the solutions must come from us. We have the tools. Technology is on our side. Readily available technological substitutions already exist for more than 70% of today's emissions. And we have the roadmap, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. And we have the imperative, undeniable, irrefutable science. The best science, according to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, tells us that any temperature rise about 1.5 degrees will lead to major and irreversible damage to the ecosystems that support us. But the science also tells us it is not too late. We can do it. Limiting warming to 1.5 degrees is still possible. But it will require fundamental transformations in all aspects of society. How we grow food, use land, fuel our transport and power our economies. We need to link climate change to a new model of development, a fair globalization with less suffering, more justice and harmony between people and planet. Dear friends, there is a cost to everything, but the biggest cost is doing nothing. The biggest cost is subsidizing a dying fossil fuel industry, building more and more coal power plants and denying what is plain as day that we are in a deep climate hole, and to get out, we must first stop digging. After all, after all, it is common sense to give trillions, after all, is it common sense to give trillions in hard-earned taxpayers' money to the fossil fuel industry to boost hurricanes, spread tropical diseases, and heighten conflict? Is it common sense to build ever more coal plants that are shocking our future? Is it common sense to reward pollution that kills millions with dirty hair and makes it dangerous for people in cities around the world to sometimes even venture out of their homes? It is time to shift taxes from salaries to carbon and to tax pollution, not people. Chers amis. Friends. The scientific community reminds us time and again that at all costs we must reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 45% by 2030. We must achieve carbon neutrality by 2050 and we must limit the increase in the global temperature to 1.5 degrees by the end of the century. Strong acceleration in our climate financing is therefore necessary. It is therefore essential that we reconstitute the resources of the Green Climate Fund in the same way that it is essential for developed countries to respect their commitments to mobilise $100 billion a year in public and private funds by 2020 to support developing countries in their efforts for climate mitigation and adaptation. Because even if we succeed in reducing emissions, the drastic effects of climate change are already with us and adaptation has therefore become an absolute priority and a sine qua non in increasing the resilience of countries and communities and avoiding human suffering. I thank the countries who have already made their commitments, in particular those who have doubled their contributions to the Green Climate Fund. I call for your bravery. Let us move towards a global 
transformation of financing, a financing that is compatible with a carbon neutral world. Friends, this summit cannot resolve all of our problems overnight, but it should give the necessary stimulus for us to actively implement the Paris Agreement's objectives. The momentum that we create today should also feed the future meetings that we have, the United Nations Conference on the Climate in Chile later this year, and then next year, the Conference on Sustainable Transport in Beijing, the Conference on Oceans in Lisbon, the Conference on Biodiversity in Kunming, and the Nature Summit in New York. Let us not be scared of being ambitious. Let us not be scared of applying pressure, and let us not be scared, above all, of constantly reminding ourselves of the truth and the reality of the situation. Let us turn to political leaders and to those actors and give them the following message. The transfer towards a green economy will lead to better living conditions and better employment and better health, better food security and greater equality as well as sustainable growth. If we move together, nobody will be left behind. Science tells us that our current path, we face at least three degrees Celsius of global heating by the end of the century. I will not be there, but my granddaughters will, and your grandchildren too. I refuse to be an accomplice in the destruction of their own and only home. I will not be a silent witness to the crime of dooming our present and destroying their right to a sustainable future. It is my obligation, our obligation, to do everything to stop the climate crisis before it stops us. Time is running out, but it's not too late. So let us heed the calls of wise leaders, religious, business, and especially young people who are taking to the streets to demand that we change our relationship with nature now. Let us lace up our running shoes and win the climate race for us all. Thank you.